Welcome to the video tutorial for DJI Flight Planner. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the area based flight planning tool. So basically you want to zoom into your area of interest or you can also use the search tool to type in uh, an address. So let's just randomly pick a location here and pretend that this is the area that we want to map. So what I'm going to do is choose the polygon tool from the toolbar here, click on that and then define my area of interest by simply clicking points to form the polygon. When I'm done just press the enter key and that brings up the camera and imaging dialog here. From the drop down list choose your DJI drone and sensor and then you don't need to change this top section here this is all the sensor information specific to this particular drone but what you can do is change any of the values that you see down here so by default it's chosen 200 feet for our altitude I'm going to change that to uh, 300 feet notice as I type some of the other numbers change and that's obviously to reflect the fact that we want to fly at 300 feet altitude um, we can also change things like forward and side overlap. By default they're set to 80% and 80%. In this case I might decide that I want to fly at say 70% forward and 60% side overlap. This adjusts your swath, swath width and also the frame rate of course to match that. Uh, what we can see here is that at 300 feet we're going to end up with a ground sample of approximately uh, 1.6 centimeters. Uh, I'm going to leave the ground speed at the default of 30 kilometers an hour. You can make it a little bit slower if you want to, or a little bit faster. But for a lot of testing, we've found that 30 kilometers an hour is a good speed to fly at. So once I'm happy with all the values here, I can press accept. And I'm presented here with the flight line calculation method dialog. You can press the auto calc button. And what that's going to do is sit there and try to optimize the route it's going to present us with a few options at the end here once this process is finished. You can choose to either minimize the number of flight lines, the number of turns, or the number of images to be captured to cover the whole area. So let's just let this finish. Almost there. And here we see the three options presented to us, minimize, minimizing the turns, minimizing the length, or minimizing the number of frames required to capture the area. I can press these buttons and it will show what the flight plan would look like if I pressed accept. In this case, the min length and min frames ended up with exactly the same result. I'm gonna go with min turn, so I select that and press okay. And so we can see some information here over on the left hand side about the flight plan that we've just created. Um, the bearing that the drone will fly, the number of turns required, which is basically the number of flight lines um, plus one, sorry, minus one. Um, approximately 1400 frames required to cover the area. Obviously this is too big for a single drone mission. We would have to land and probably refresh the battery to be able to complete the whole thing. Uh, the capture area which is basically the green polygon that I drew is about 98 hectares uh, and so on and so forth. Um, let's say for example I wasn't happy with flying at this particular bearing here and I wanted to fly due east-west you can just press the east-west button here up here on the toolbar and that adjusts the flight plan now so that our flight lines run due east-west same obviously with north-south. We can also use the rotate button to rotate the flight lines by half a degree each time or if we know for example that we need to fly at a heading of 30 degrees we can select the custom button here and type it in ourselves and that's now oriented our flight lines at 30 degrees for us now I don't want to complicate this particular example anymore so let's just pretend that we're happy with that that's the flight plan that we want to fly what you do is go up to the export menu and select the CSV for DJI Ultimate Flight App and then enter our choice here whether we want to trigger the drone based on position or based on time. The basic difference between these two is that if you choose the first one, position based, the drone is going to stop at each and every point to take the photograph before moving on to the next point. 
The time-based method, will, the drone will fly the path continuously. It won't stop at each waypoint, but it will trigger the camera um, based on time at approximately each of these locations. Now, as long as there's plenty of day, daylight or bright sunlight outside, you should not have an issue with motion blur. If it's quite dark, say dusk or late at night, um, you may have trouble with the time-based method and want to revert to the position-based method for triggering. So in this case I'll select time-based, that's my preferred option. Now I also have another option here, do we want to trigger the camera nadir only, which is basically pointing straight down, or also nadir and oblique. If we choose the second option it will fly the flight plan five times, but each time it will rotate the, the gimbal at different angles so that we end up with full 3D coverage of the area. For most intents and purposes, nadir only is going to be okay. So let's leave it on that. Now all we need to do is specify a file name. And we're done. That flight plan has been exported. You can now place that CSV flight plan into the GS folder of DJI Ultimate Flight App on your Android phone or tablet, ready to be imported into the DJI Ultimate Flight App for flying the mission. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Bye.